Montreal. We're a few seconds away from the top of the hour. It's that time. I would like to welcome Patricia Gajo. She is the editor of our Montreal uh, fashion magazine. So uh, let's say hello. Hello, Patricia. Good morning, Marie. How are you? Very well, young lady. Where are you calling us from? Are you in the city right now? I'm calling uh, from my office at home, yes. Oh, so you are in Montreal. All righty. Look, I know you're here to talk to us about the hottest swimsuit styles. So I'm just going to throw out some names. If you can just explain to us what that style would be, okay? Hello? Okay. 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 Marine. Marine? Yeah. Okay, well, marine is a is a popular look, uh, usually with a lot of navy. Um, um, it's a very preppy, nautical look. Um, motives like stripes, anchors, ropes. I'm sure you're familiar with Jean Paul Gaultier's, you know, classic striped shirt. I love That's it. That's the marine look. I love it. <laughs> okay. It's very modern and crisp and preppy. Actually, St. James does a lot of those looks. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot because I have one of their uh, navy blue and white uh, striped jackets. Uh, actually, very uh, marine look. I love that. I love that. So I guess when you're being invited to parties on yachts, things like that, you should maybe do a little marine? <laughs> exactly. Well, you don't actually have to wear the marine look uh, on a yacht because uh, obviously not everyone has a yacht. Um, it's also great for going to the beach or poolside parties. And it's also a look actually that can be worn uh, on the streets. The marine look is very trendy on the streets right now. So, you know, wearing uh, navy dresses or red and white striped little um, sundresses, very popular right now. All righty. Uh, retro. The retro look. Well, I'm sure you're familiar with the, the pinup girl, the vintage pinup girl. So, you know, we're thinking of more high-waisted looks. You know, the low-waisted jean was in for a very long time, but high-waisted looks are really in right now. Um, like the Vargas uh, girls in Playboy, the Vargas uh, <laughs> Remember he would draw these very retro 40 style ladies? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So these are kind of blasts from the past and they're coming back uh, now. And a lot of cute little um, accents for that, like cute little cherries on prints, polka dots, gingham, these kind of old school looks. Very uh, popular right now. You know, I'll tell you, the, the two pieces of those days... I saw a lot of them uh, being promoted, and it's a full panty, like right up to the waist, and, uh, and the top, the bra style, you know, the top is fuller, larger straps, like the real old days, man, when you'd see somebody in a two-piece. Yes, it's, it's a very uh, adorable kind of aesthetic, um, and it's, it's actually very um, helpful for women that are on the beach, you know, today, because, you know, we all don't have perfect bodies, so these styles are typically more modest, and they offer more flattering coverage that's still very very chic but very comfortable i agree and i want to thank whoever brought it back because after, <laughs> after two cesareans patricia you know i don't have the eight pack you know what i'm saying so well, not everybody does so you can be happy about that yes now bando bando kind of scares me i think you have to be very thin lean and young right um, bando, the bando is very revealing. So, yes, you're right, uh, Marie. It's not for everyone. It is a very popular look, though, with girls, though, uh, maybe younger girls and maybe more popular with girls that aren't so full on top because uh, there's not a lot of support. The bando look is really good for girls that want to maybe suntan without the straps because basically it's, it's, as it, it, it's as it sounds. It's just a band that goes right across your chest. What would you wear with it? You mean for the bottom? Yeah. Um, well, that's the great thing about bikinis these days is that you can really mix and match. Um, you can match, match uh, like a, a, a string bikini or a fuller top bikini bottom. You can really wear anything these days, and even in color. So you don't even have to wear the same color on top as you wear on the bottom. All right. Listen, if I had to go out in a bandeau, unless it's the size of a sheet, it wouldn't work for me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the good thing with a bandeau is that you you can get the bandeau now with the little strap that comes from the center. So if you're maybe walking around on the beach or playing volleyball and you don't want that bandeau to fall, you can actually tie it around your neck for a little bit more uh, security, if you will. <laughs> okay, well, I got to tell you, the, I use bandos around my head. They hold my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm beyond the age, honey, where I can wear the bandeau anywhere else. Uh, <laughs> talk to me about one-piece cutouts, Patricia. The one-piece cutouts. Now, this is a very interesting look. It's very uh, very fashion-forward, and obviously, if you're, if you're 
if you want to tan, it's maybe not a good look to wear if you're at the beach because you'll get some weird tans. But basically, it's a one piece, and usually there's a flap panel that goes down the center of your body that connects usually a, a triangle bikini top with your bottom. So it's a bikini with a kind of a panel in the front that make it a one piece. So on the sides, um, those are where the cutouts are. So maybe not so flattering if you're not so confident about, you know, your about your about your hourglass figure. But um, it can be very flattering for women that um, are maybe not so um, flat in their tummies because it's actually very uh, there's an illusion that your tummy is flatter. So it camouflages a bit. It camouflages a little bit the tummy. So it's very popular. Um, comes in a lot of. You can get it in solids or prints. Um, a lot of the trends now uh, are to have it actually embellished with hardware. So like little gold buckles or silver um, chains. Um, but I don't recommend it for going swimming. It's it's really a, a pool side look, uh, lounging uh, by the beach, that kind of thing. All right. Do you have, is there a material or a fabric that's more popular that you can recommend that works better, you know, going in and out of water, or drying, getting it wet again? Because I've bought bathing suits in the past where once they got wet, all of a sudden they would dry, but you'd have like this little sag in the back. You have this little <laughs> sag. Yeah, laugh at me, Patricia. Go ahead. Have your moment, honey. Don't hold actually, back. Actually, that's a very good question, Marie, because um, I, I, you know, everybody has that problem when they go swimming, and I, I don't know if there actually is a fabric right now that doesn't sag when you come out of the pool. But, you know, the technology for uh, fabrics for uh, for swimmer has been increasingly improving over the over the years, and I'm pretty sure there's probably some fabrics out there that don't do that. But the funny thing is, is that swimwear. Um, you know, it's just like we were talking about the marine look a little earlier. Swimwear has um, actually, you know, it's it's crossed that line into everyday wear. So people can wear bandeau tops actually under, you know, an open uh, shirt or um, some of the more retro looks with a, a skirt and, you know, a little jacket. So I'm not too sure about fabrics, you know, in the water, actually. I'm more in tune with the fabrics that are fashion looks on the on the sidewalk, actually. Right on. You know, it, it reminds me of a girlfriend I had when we were much younger, and we'd all go out to, to swim. She'd never get in the water, but she looked hot. She looked like, hot. She would well, fix I, herself up, and that was it, man. It was for cruising. There was no <laughs> way she was getting wet. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah, yeah. I was actually a funny story, but I was just in Simon's the other day, and I was, you know, looking at these beautiful Mizzoni, uh, which is an Italian um, label, these Mizzoni um, bikinis, and, you know, they're made, they're knitted or crocheted, actually. And Missoni is very abstract, too, in his patterns and everything. Very abstract. Yeah. Very colorful, very yes. beautiful um, kind of material. And I asked the lady, I said, well, you know, w would these colors fade after they got wet? And she's like, well, I don't think you would actually wear this in the water. So there <laughs> you, have a, you have a bikini, and it's sold as a bikini, but you don't wear it in the water. Yeah, so and then you have... You know, you have to warn all the men if you plan to do that, not to pick you up and throw you in <laughs> yeah, during exactly. one of the games. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, exactly. Girls, you got to put your sign up next to you, you know, and say, I am not wearing a water bikini, so <laughs> do not touch if your hands are wet. Exactly. Um, one thing I need to, to chat about, Patricia, is mm -hmm. the one piece. Have we completely neglected the one piece this year? Uh, no, uh, the one piece is back, and you know, in a in a very very strong way. You know, we've seen looks by like Erez and things like that, where beautiful, uh, elegant one pieces. Um, what is typically when you think of one pieces, you maybe think of you know someone in the Olympics or you know uh, an Olympic swimmer or a sporty look. But there's some very very beautiful one pieces. Um, that are uh, very fashion forward. Some of the looks um, are actually strap strapless, so again, you might not want to go swimming because you might lose your suit. But um, the one piece, you know, very beautiful looks. And no, I I don't think um, that they're gone. They're they're back. And even for girls, for younger girls too, are opting to wear one pieces. So it's not even a look that you would traditionally associate with uh, maybe an older woman. One pieces are are very hot right now. If we're talking about the cutouts. That's another version of the one piece. Well, you know, the cutout for me is a cutout. <laughs> it's not a one piece, you know what I'm saying? Because usually your whole back is out, your sides are out. 
it's like, uh, okay, this is not a one piece. It's a cutout, like you just described it uh, properly. But the one piece, I'll tell you why. You have the one piece for the younger set. Uh, you know, if your child's going to be jumping in and out of the pool and doing all kinds of stuff, they want to be comf- comfy. So the one piece was always good for that if you're more athletic. L- like you said, I've had friends who said, you know, have beautiful bodies, young, but no, I mean, they're not comfortable in bikinis because they're very active at the beach or at the pool. Now, the older set, and I'm going to go now for ladies 50 plus, you know, if you can pull off a bikini, great, or a cutout or whatever, uh, but the one piece today is giving us some choices. You know the one I like, and I'm really going to go back in time now. I don't know if you'll remember, Patricia. We used to have the one piece with the little skirt. The one piece with the little skirt yeah. attached? Do you mean like a ruffle yeah, around the wound? exactly. That's right. It, that's actually, you know, the this kind of uh, vintage pinup retro look is it's 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 back. I love back. it. I love it. And you know what surprised me? That men actually thought it was sexy. It's it is very sexy. And in some of the more modern versions, they have uh, kind of the the lower cut uh, around the thigh. So exactly, and they're cut a little higher on the thigh on the side, and then you have the little skirt. It's perfect. It's very adorable, very adorable. And, and very, very flattering for women of all ages. Yes. You're absolutely right. And the little skirt hides the two little hangy things when you get out of the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and the little skirt also hides, you know, maybe a little extra that you have around the waist. Yes. Voila. <laughs> uh, young lady, we're going to go to a break. Do you mind if I, I keep you uh, with us here and we talk a bit about uh, uh, fashion trends in general? I love chatting fashion, no problem. Okay, hold on, sweetie. We'll be right with you again. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to a small break. We have Patricia Gajo. Uh, we're talking about fashion, and uh, Patricia is editor of Fashion Magazine. Young lady, uh, let's talk a bit trends for the season. Okay, well, uh, first of all, the big statement of the season is bright. Do you, do you like wearing colors? Uh, you know what? Uh, I think when we pass 50, one of two things happen. We either <laughs> tone it down the first few years because we're not sure, or we go way out with the color and the shine. So I'm okay. somewhere in between right now. Well, you know what? Maybe this season you can experiment with a little bit more uh, color in your wardrobe because deep, saturated colors straight out of a box of Crayola crayons are really, really hot right now. So we're looking at colors like electric turquoise, bright bubble gum, really sunny yellow, mandarin orange. And, you know, if you can wear it, actually, it's, it's very neutral a look to wear it head to toe. So, and this look can be very, very elegant despite the bright color. For example, uh, I'm sure you know Valentino, Mr. Valentino. He sent down the runway some stunning poppy red dresses, very relaxed fit dresses. Also, a maxi-length version in bright pink. Maxi? Um, a maxi dress? Maxi, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like it's a lot, but actually, you know, when, when you wear one color head to toe, it, it almost has a, a neutralizing effect. I love ankle dresses. I just didn't think they were coming back from the fashion designers yet. Oh, no, no, no. They're, they're still around. Michael Kors had a lot of uh, maxi dress uh, this summer, so, yeah, it, it's, it's, still, it's still in season. Don't worry. But another thing with the big brights is um, color blocking is really in. And are you familiar with the, the term of color blocking? No. Explain to naive moi, please. Okay, so color blocking is really fun. Basically, it's mixing two solids. So let's say you go with a, a bright blue top, and you pair that with a, a yellow skirt, let's say. A friend of mine, um, actually, Carrie McPherson from Laser Bane, it's a very popular woman's website. Her signature color combo is actually fuchsia, a very hot pink, and bright orange. And, it, and it's really, really fun. The other day, I personally bought a, a hot pink strapless dress by Mary St. Pierre, and I paired it with orange espadrille wedges. Now, this is something I would never have thought of a couple years ago, but right now, it it absolutely works. So, so color blocking is in. Okay, let me see if I understand. Color blocking is basically putting together colors we would have never done before. Never, never have done before. Well, yes. <laughs> basically, yes. <laughs> but if you want to try color blocking and you don't want to look like uh, a fruit basket, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, I, ha- I got this actually really great tip from celebrity stylist Irma Martinez. She says to limit yourself to two main colors. So if you don't want to, you know, look like you're going overboard, two main colors is probably your top. If you add a third or a fourth, I'd say make it a small detail, like maybe in the shoes 
or earrings or even your manicure if you have a colorful But is color, is color blocking only for bright colors? For example, if I chose navy blue and orange, would it be considered color blocking? It's still color blocking. Actually, one of the other trends uh, this summer is uh, white hot. So white is a, can also be mixed with uh, color blocking. So if you had, let's say, a, a really bright um, blouse and you paired it with uh, white hot jeans, let's say for as an example white jeans actually is uh is white is the is the new black this year actually and white is everywhere so you can mix color blocking uh, a bright color with white and it's still considered uh color blocking okay i need to ask you a question a friend of mine wanted me to ask you sure the floral jeans are big this year right floral jeans are big yes okay um what on earth she wants to know is the best thing to wear on top so they don't see you coming from 40 miles away. <laughs> How do you tone down if you feel a little comfortable with the big pattern and the colors on your jeans? Well, I think, I think some women might be scared. Yeah, you, folds can be a little bit scary, um, particularly in, uh, it's not only jeans, it can be actually just uh, cotton pants. Um, because people think of uh, floral, and they kind of relate it to Laurel Ashley flowers, and it doesn't really sound very sexy, right? But um, a lot of designers are coming out now with um, uh, floral patterns that are a lot more edgy, like Eve Gravel, you know, she came out with very edgy uh, fitted summer dresses, or Sabrina Barilla came out with the floral shirt dress, Denis Gagnon did um, florals on black background, so if if you don't want to, you know, uh, you know, be this big floral walking down the sidewalk, you know, a, a tip is to go for the really small flowers. I think sometimes if you're wearing the big floral prints, that can be a little bit overwhelming. The trend now is for really very delicate floral looks. Okay, so wherever the floral is, if you need to add to it, we should tone down whatever we're adding and make that more neutral. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yes, I would, I would tone it down by maybe adding it with a solid. So let's say uh, a solid uh, white blouse with uh, some floral pants or something like that. Excellent. I love it already. <laughs> <laughs> you might not want to go floral head to toe because uh, I mean, on the runway, it's, it's very beautiful. But I think in the real world, it doesn't always work. No, no. It's hard to wear, man. It's hard to wear. I saw a beautiful <laughs> blouse that was in Paisley, very Laura Ashley, like you said. Mm -hmm. And I put it on. I was so keen on the blouse. Loved the colors. The minute I tried it on, though, couldn't do it. Couldn't pull it off. You could, well, you know, to tone it down, too, another idea is to wear uh, a blazer on top. So if you had a white blazer, so to go with that white trend, or even if you had a navy blazer to go with that marine trend, you could put it on top of your floral blouse, and right away you'd tone down the floral so it wasn't, you know... Okay, brilliant floral. idea. That's why you're the fashion guru and I do radio, Patricia. See? <laughs> All right. Listen, I'm going to take another quick break. Do you mind sticking around another few minutes? No problem. Excellent. We'll be right back. Uh, Patricia Gajo, before I go on about uh, picking your mind about all the good stuff we should know for fashion this summer, talk to me a bit about your role as editor of Fashion Magazine. Um, well, Fashion Magazine uh, is actually based in Toronto, so the entire team uh, is in downtown Toronto, but they have editors in satellite cities, so I'm the Montreal editor in, in Montreal, so I concentrate on everything and everything that is on Montreal. Well, you know, we have some fabulous designers here, so I'm glad that your magazine has someone stationed here. Oh, Montreal is just a hotbed of designers, and um, every day, you know, I, I get to know uh, new designers, or I learn more about, you know, designers that have been around for the last, you know, decade or so, and it's, it's a really beautiful industry, and I'm really proud to be a part of it. Uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, I remember when uh, Mini Cucci uh, was just starting, Okay. Um, she uh, she came out with some amazing stuff. Changed the had to let go of her name as a brand and, and developed another brand. The name is escaping me now. Enver made a big name uh, for himself when the uh, governor general uh, had, mm -hmm. yeah had chosen him as a designer and then it, it got leaked. Remember what she was going to wear and there was a whole scene anyway. Um, but we have some amazing talent in Montreal for fashion. If you go on Saint Denis Street. 
I'm sure you probably go there daily. Some of the boutiques and the artists and the stuff they make, I mean, it just floors me. Oh, oh, to- but St. Denis actually uh, is the home, uh, as you might know, of uh, designer Philip Dubuc. But a lot of the stores, uh, Marie, are actually the, the cutting edge Montreal designers. A lot of them you can find now on St. Paul, which is in the old Montreal. And this little area is becoming uh, the, the new fashion trend area. So you have stores like Denis Gagnon, he has his store on St. Paul. Uh, just off St. Paul, you have uh, K417. Uh, which is owned by actually Philip Dubuc. Um, you have Essence. You have a lot of... So if you're looking for Montreal designers and more avant-garde stuff, uh, St. Paul in the old Montreal is really the place to be right now. So leggings, 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 and yeah. Uh, is that we're wearing the tights with the longer, loose tops over them? Oh, the tunics. The tunics over the... Um they're not tights. There's another word. Oh, leggings. The jeggings. Leggings, 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 and yeah. Uh, is that... What is that? <laughs> well, the, the the leggings actually, it evolved, I think, last summer, or was I don't even know if it was two summers ago now, but the legging actually evolved into uh, a jegging, which is a, 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 a blend of two words, uh, jeans and legging. So it was called jegging. And basically what it was, it was a, a legging, which, you know, which is like um, kind of like pantyhose, but, the, you know, it's cut off at the ankle. And they mixed it with the, the top, of jeans so you kind of you have a zipper and a button and even sometimes little belt hooks so you have the super tightness of the jeggings sorry of the leggings but you have the look of maybe a skinny jean because the skinny jean is another thing that's also very popular but the jegging is uh, a more comfortable version of this have i lost you no not at all but i gotta <laughs> tell you i think the reason why this style just flew is because think about it girls we put on the jegging or the legging whichever one whether we want to go with solids or you know today they have so many choices it's nuts you can get them in fur and jean materials and in shiny gold lame and everything uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day you you know i mean it's acceptable now uh, in many places even the workforce so you know what you wear the nice long tops that, that end just above the knee you're hiding the tummy if it's a little too much for you to hold in after lunch uh it covers just about any midriff or muffin top uh if your legs are good you're looking fabulous uh so you know what i think it was embraced by women for that reason the comfort of it oh well it, it's not only comfortable but um it's a very classic look and i think the it's a very universal, uh, classic look, the linen white tunic over leggings. It's very Capri, it's very Jackie O. Yes. And it's a style that hasn't, you know, hasn't died uh, season after season after season. And frankly, I think it will be here forever. It, it's a beautiful, flattering look. But more, Marie, more than the, the, the jeggings, is the skinny jean is, is still really hot right now. And... Um, if you're thinking of buying a new pair of jeans, you should think of the skinny. But the skinny, it goes back to the those brights we were talking about earlier. Right now, any, everywhere you see is the bright jeans. Orange is big in jeans this year. Huge. The mat, you're exactly right. The mandarin orange. Uh, you can even go crazy with yellow jeans, um, lavender. Emerald, very, yeah. Emerald is huge. A very popular uh, color, as we, we've seen on Chanel and we've seen... Uh, all over the runways um, in New York Fashion Week is this beautiful sea foam color. And that's kind of fashion talk for like uh, pale green or mint green. I love so, that color, by the way. I love it. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful color. So, you know, the skinny jean uh, is definitely, if there's one item you have to add to your wardrobe this summer, it's probably something to reach for, either in a bright color or in a beautiful crisp white um, or a beautiful pastel color. Okay, you know what? I saw a guy in skinny jeans. It wasn't a gay guy. It was like a guy. <laughs> no, no, because I can understand my friend. He'll buy skinny jeans. But this was like a businessman, and he was wearing it with a shirt, you know, and a tie and a, um, a nice blazer. It didn't look right on the guy, the it skinny didn't, it didn't jean. Look- no. I just well, thought it was weird. I To see a big, you know, hunky guy, and he's wearing a skinny jean, it just didn't look right. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's, it's actually very trendy. Right? Maybe maybe it was his body type, and it wasn't very flattering on him. Uh, yeah, and you know, I think he was like over 40, 45, 
trying to look hot and cool. It just didn't look right. I think he would have looked fantastic had it just been a little looser, you know, going down his leg. But then again, that's me. Patricia Gajo, before I let you go, I want you to rattle off the top five summer trends. Type five, okay, well, let's say big brights, uh, the white hot look, so white jeans or head-to-toe white, pretty pastels, uh, fierce florals, so not your Laura Ashley look, and the last one I'd say was probably that bohemian babe look, that kind of festival look. Oh, where I can hang feathers from my hair. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Feather earrings are very in. Still, I know they are. They're not. <laughs> Big time, I know. Boy, you're on top of everything, aren't you? <laughs> okay, let me ask again. Okay, all these questions are coming in. Um, somebody wants to know shorts. What's a decent, acceptable length? Uh, acceptable. Well, or acceptable is a funny word because, you know, we... S- what we think is acceptable is not what we see on the streets or on the runway, right? So the, the short, short, short look is very, very in right now. But unfortunately, you probably don't want to be a young single female walking down the sidewalk in short shorts. But maybe if you're at a pool party or with friends, then that's okay. All righty. And uh, for those of us that, you know, are, are a little on, uh, I'm going to use a word now that I haven't heard in fashion for a while, Bermudas. <laughs> Bermudas. Um, for men, actually, the Bermuda the Bermuda look for men is very in for, but as a pool look, I, I think, um, well, no, that's not true, because, you know, there's some very, you know, sartorial men that are wearing their Bermuda look, and they wear it with the kind of preppy collared shirt, short sleeve shirt. And loafers, yeah. And loafers, this kind of nerdy, geeky look is very, very trendy right now. Okay. And uh, when we uh, travel to a vacation spot for summer fun, uh, what's a must-have? If you had to bring along one must-have in clothing, what would it be? Well, the must-have that I would bring, I would bring a big floppy hat. Whoa! Never never underestimate the power of the sun and how it can tire you out and, you know, and all the... And also, it, it protects your skin, you know? I think that's the number one thing that people forget is to uh, protect their skin from the sun. And also, so, in moments of embarrassing situations, the floppy hat can also hide your privates. <laughs> That's a very good point. Thank you. That's one thing I didn't think of, so thank you. Well, I think you have too much class, Patricia, to take it that far. <laughs> so I just jumped in there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, girl. I think Montreal's lucky to have you here. You are like, you're fiercely into this. I'm going to use your own word. Uh, and I'm so glad you gave us the time. Well, thank you for having me. It's wonderful chatting with you anytime. Excellent. Uh, for sure, we're going to bug you again for the fall season. Okay. Well, have a great day. Thank you, Patricia. Bye.